Uh, hi, my name is Jesse Lucas. I am the physics and engineering teacher at Pikeville High School and my presentation and my grant was called Newton's Playground. The problem of practice that I was trying to um, figure out is can using wireless simplified sensors increase the efficiency of a lab and therefore lead to more learning and deeper thought about the data. Um, so the way that I run my classroom, especially my physics classes, is very Newtonian. So a lot of times at the beginning of my, my units, I'll do a lab, uh, they'll collect a lot of data, and I have them at least try to find the relationships between the variables that we're going to be talking about for that uh, unit. Um, so to, to increase the efficiency of those labs, the less time you can work on the procedures, the more time you have to analyze the data that they collect. Um, and then there's applications to testing and real life um, because if they're using the more efficient sensors, um, they're more likely to be able to use that more advanced uh, equipment and technology later on as well. Uh, so what I decided to do was I decided to buy uh, something called Vernier LabQuest 3s. Um, so I already have um, sensors. But buying these opens up a new world because they're overwhelmingly more efficient. And we'll talk about how, how much more efficient a little bit later. Um, and I use these pretty regularly uh, in my, my physics classes and I use them some in engineering. Uh, for example, I use them in labs like my forces labs, my momentum lab, and that's the one I'm gonna be discussing a little bit later. Um, if I would have got them at the beginning of the year, I'd use them on the acceleration due to gravity lab. Uh, so it's kind of used everywhere in the class. Um, so before, and this is just an example of uh, Newton's second law lab. So this was a lab to try and get the students to derive the equation F is equal to MA. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. It's a pretty simple lab. Uh, so before I got the sensors, um, I would have to use a spring scale. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a hook attached to a spring. You hang the object on it and it will kind of give you an estimate on what the force is down the ramp. Uh, there's a huge source of error on that because uh, you're using a spring uh, and it's also on a ramp so it can kind of stick. It, a lot of bad data comes from that. Uh, and the photo gates that I use are really old. Uh, you got to click three buttons to collect the data. If you misclick one of those buttons on accident, you mess up the lab and you have to rerun the trial. Um, and it's really, really easy to mix up the data because it's not labeled. So a lot of times if you're getting two separate times and you are on that lab uh, from the old photo gates, if you mix up those times, well, your whole lab is ruined. It, it can't be done. Uh, and then you have to manually type in all of those values into Desmos to get a graph. Now, after that, uh, now that I got the Vernier lab quest, there's a force probe connected to LabQuest, so they can use that to find exactly how much force is going down the ramp. There's no more estimate there. So you're eliminating a major source of error in the lab. Um, and all the photo gates are connected to LabQuest. And LabQuest is super easy to navigate and see. It will show you time for this photo gate, time for that photo gate. And then it will show you the graphs right there. So instead of the students having to go manually type this in on Desmos, it automatically gives them all the points that they need and all the graphs that they need. So then they can get those graphs and analyze them uh, overwhelmingly easier. Um, so some of the effects uh, that I was hoping it would have is faster, more efficient labs. Uh, like I said, if there's less time on procedures and collecting the data, they have more time to analyze, they can get more trials um, and they can finish it faster. Uh, and then the focus could then move from kind of the setup of the lab and the procedure the procedures of the lab to the stuff that would actually benefit them more, which is the data analysis skills. Um, technology experience, like I said, uh, you're going to be dealing with more advanced technology, so it gives you a chance to get exposed to better technology for the future uh, and possibly collaborations. I didn't get to any of this year. Uh, but the other teachers could also use this potentially like a math class could look at the data. Uh, they could look at the graphs and say, hey, I could use this uh, and then start using these sensors in their class as well. Uh, and we could kind of co-teach a lesson. Um, 
so for the results so far, um, just like formative wise, in my observation, uh, more of the qualitative data, the labs are overwhelmingly quicker. I mean, it's not even close. Uh, and the lab that I'm going to talk about here in a second that we ran with, it was the Momentum Lab. Uh, and in past years, the Momentum Lab's taken me anywhere from five to six days to do. Uh, and that makes it almost borderline, like, should I even do it? Is it worth it? Um, this year, the, the students that used the Vernier Lab Quest finished in three. So you're shaving off literally half the time. Uh, and they still did more trials than what I have in previous years. So they collected more data in half the time. Um, it's overwhelmingly easier to work with. It's basically a plug and play. You can plug it into your computer and it will automatically read you the stuff. It'll give you the graphs, the data points. It's so much easier. And that gives you more time to work on the analysis, which is the important part. Uh, and that's the emphasis of any science test at this point is uh, data analysis. Um, so that's a big thing. Um, so some of the data that we can look at uh, quantitatively is the ACT uh, did increase this year. And I did have some juniors that used it. Um, it's a little bit harder to kind of see how that's going to take effect just out of one year. So hopefully in years uh, in the future, we can continue to look at the trend lines of the ACT science portion. Um, and then the average test score actually increased by 5% on average from the previous years I've used the sensors. So I looked back at the last class's um, unit assessments, specifically the questions aimed at kind of the, the topics that we would get from these labs. Uh, and the results were much better. It's 5% increase this year. I imagine it would, it would continue to increase uh, the more efficiently I learned to use them. Um, so just based on that data itself, uh, just the qualitative and quantitative data, I would say that this was a, a pretty big success for the first year. Um, and so uh, I just wanted to kind of wrap up by talking about one of the labs uh, that I kind of already foreshadowed to, and that was the Momentum Lab. Uh, and how I know that the lab quest made such a big difference is where I only had three that I could buy because they are kind of expensive, uh, I had to have two groups that use the old sensors. So I really could run kind of an experiment with it where I had the new sensors and the old sensors. Um, I made the lab quest groups run five runs per trial instead of three runs per trial uh, because it was easier for them to collect the data. Um, so they actually did you know, quite a bit more uh, than the actual old sensor groups. Uh, and they still finished overwhelmingly quicker uh, and not just that they finished quicker, but their data was much better. So if you look at the data right here, uh, this was the data sheet that the students used, and this was the old sensors. So if you look at this, I could only give them three runs. And if you look back at the main bottom at cell F10, you can see where I, I'm asking them to see the total momentum of the system before and after, and then looking at that percent change. The percent change in the difference is, is the most important parts uh, of the lab, and it's the most important parts of the analysis. So if you look at the percent change of this, it's negative 15%, which isn't terrible, but then it jumps up to 290%, and then it jumps back down to negative 1%. Uh, so the findings are super inconsistent. They're jumping around. The percent changes are constantly different. Um, so that's with the old sensors. So now if you look at the exact same thing with the new sensors, and I grabbed this data a little bit before from one of my students before she was finished, uh, but it's a huge difference here. So you, if you can look back at the exact same uh, thing, the total momentum at the bottom, and this one it's uh, cell E10, and then you look over at I10 at the percent change, it's negative six, negative five, negative two. They're all right there and they're all very, very small. And we wanted those to, to explain the uh, concepts that they needed to learn. I needed those to be really, really small. Uh, so this worked overwhelmingly better. The data showed the relationship that I wanted it to much better because there was less error associated with it. Uh, so I'm excited to continue. Next year, I plan on buying one or two more and that way every group can use these new sensors. Um, and I'm really excited about the findings that I had uh, for my grant.